time I joined the Redrand, because we lived in, I lived in Beachman Street, mm -hmm. number 34. I remember it like yesterday, Fate Kennedy's Bakery, 34 Beachman Street. The idea of a priest was in my mind for a long time. It was never a man for girls, with all respect to you. I had no girl, I wasn't interested. I was more interested in Celtic Park on a Saturday. I wouldn't miss that for anything. I said, there's no time, no time for them really. <laughs> The idea of being a priest then was, was in my mind always. I don't know what would it end, but I do, I do remember it was there for a long time, slowly maturing and developing. And, and then the, the crisis came then as I got older, which sort of priest would I be? That was my worry. I had my mind made up. Would I be? Oh, do I see a secular? And I did go up to St. Malachy's College, and I couldn't get any priests to talk to at the holiday time, so I forbade said I'd go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I decided then that maybe if there'd be a mission in St. Paul's, I'd go down there and talk to the missioner. And that didn't happen either. And then tragedy <coughs> came into my family or me. My mother, God rest her soul, she was a young woman when she died. She was from she was a hot Republican. She was from a uh, teacher, as I told you. She never taught politics. She died about, she was in the 40s. And that meant my poor father, who was one of the best men ever made, had to look after five kids. And uh, it was a bit of a dose. He got a housekeeper from County Antrim. And in her own way, nice enough, but still, I could see myself she wasn't the one for the job. So then, I don't know how it happened, another lady came this way, and he uh, became good friends, and that was the start. And this other lady, it's interesting to note, was the sister of a very prominent red interest, whom some of you certainly have heard of, Joan Carr the writer. He's written many books. His sister was a St. Louis nun. She was stationed in Bellamina. I remember well visiting her there. And then she left the Louis nuns. I don't know why. And my father met her. I don't know where. But anyhow, he married her. And it was a very happy marriage, thanks be to God. And when uh, some of the Clonard men heard about this marriage and they were all nosy and they had them as a young fella. I remember I can read some of us hearing about a young fella on the loose and they made after him. And I was invited to come to Clonard. I didn't know the place. I, although I wasn't a boy's coffee here today, I swore at wherever I'd go, I'd never draw their interest. Uh, <laughs> so, a, a, a big man standing on the altar. To me, he looked like a giant, maybe dark, crying, probably marching, <coughs> shouting and all that. And I said, those boys aren't for me. And they are. <laughs> when, when this marriage took place, this father, what he could read, they, they got interested in the young lad. And I had to go to, to see Clonard. And once I went there, I was trapped. Thank <laughs> <laughs> um, God, I was trapped, but uh, I was ready, I was trapped. John Carr set me for me in this way, actually. But I wasn't, you don't believe you'd be thinking now, some girl joined to me or something like that. I wasn't a girl's man ever, I don't know. I, I wasn't interested, it's a bit more interested in the football. I go to St. Paul's sometimes, and uh, I'd be in the porch or go in, and I spot one of the septic team at the 11 o'clock mass. Ferris, Sam Ferris would be one of them. They were just standing there at the mass. And I'd go out as excited. Oh, do you know who I saw? I saw Ferris at the 11 o'clock mass. 
in St. Paul's or Semicurrent. These were their heroes, our, our different. And we sought the word of them, but they were gods to us. They were our gods. That's, that's the best thought. There was no gen question of a girl or a woman or anything. I assure you there wasn't. I hope I'm not disappointing you. <laughs> <laughs>